fun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire Line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, new for 2021, standing at Gainesway. Hi everybody, it's Jay Privman along with Marty McGee as we continue to look at our evolving Derby Watch Top 20. And Marty, I dare say this past week was probably the biggest shakeup we've had, not in terms of numbers of horses, but in terms of one specific horse going out and that resulted in a new top 20 favorite. So let's recap all of that. Yeah, that's true, Jay. Last, uh, late last week, Life is Good was ruled out of the Kentucky Derby. I had him five to two on the basis that he was incredibly two to one, eight weeks out in pool four of the Kentucky Derby future wager. By the way, pool five is this weekend. But when you have a big favorite like that, like that out, uh, it just shakes up the odds in every which way. So right now, going into what this is uh, five weeks out from the Derby, the Central Quality three to one, greatest honor who runs Saturday in the Florida Derby. We'll talk about that in another video. At seven to two, uh, Contra Tour six to one, and then Hot Rod Charlie off his victory in the Louisiana Derby six to one. Medina Spirit down from I think I had him twenty or thirty to one, down to twelve to one. He looks a lot better now with life as good as that. <laughs> life as good as that, as you uh, noted in one of your writings. And then risk taking at fifteen to one. We got four of them at twenty to one, four of them at thirty to one, and then uh, with six of them including the only new shooter in the group, Obesos, the uh, almost the runner-up in the Louisiana Derby, third-place finisher. He's one of the 50-to-1 shots for Greg Foley. Shades of major fed last year. Uh, Greg's just going to Derby every year, it looks like. <laughs> he's, he's turning into a Derby regular, uh, is uh, Greg Foley. You mentioned Obesos getting up for third in the Louisiana Derby and also the big move uh, in terms of our rankings and the odds with Hot Rod Charlie, who won the race. Marty, we had talked last week in our preview about Hot Rod Charlie and how well he had trained coming out of the Robert Lewis and that it looked like he was sitting on a big race. The thing that, that I expected him to run well, the thing that surprised me was that he was put on the lead by Joel Rosario. But I thought, as it turns out, it was the right move. And I, he was best on the day. What did you think of his race? Well, you know, Jay, they've, they've run the Louisian Derby now twice and correct me if I'm wrong, at a mile and three sixteenths. And both times the early leader has gone on to win. And, you know, it's kind of the bass Ackwards thing on speed. <laughs> Isn't supposed to win longer races, but it does. And in this particular race, I thought maybe Joe Talamo might have had enough horse to go to the lead with him, but uh, he went ahead and let Rosario take the lead. And then it was a merry-go-round race after that, one, two, the whole way with Obesos really being the only closer in there. Mandaloon obviously disappointing as the favorite. Uh, Proxy not too hot either. He kind of uh, just ran in place the whole way. So uh, as we go forward from this, these horses, it looks like none of them will run back in the Kentucky Derby. So this is it for them. None of them will run back until the Kentucky Derby, uh, right? Yes, correct. That, yes. So uh, we've got five of these horses uh, on our Derby Watch Top 20. Marty, we sort of brush stroked over some of them, but let's let's go in a little more detail. We talked about Hot Rod Charlie, who I think becomes a, a top contender for the Kentucky Derby off of that Louisiana Derby win. You referenced Midnight Bourbon. He did finish second. You know, to me, Marty, he's run three good races in that series down there. I just don't know if he's going to quite get over the hump in time by May the first. But being by Tisnow, you'd think he would continue continue to improve, much as Tisnow did with, during his career. Well, I've got a root in there because Joe Talamo is married to my niece. So, yeah, I'm for him all the way, Jay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, three uh, three races down there, three good ones. Um, you know, not spectacular. And he was life and death kind of to hold on for second in there. But, uh, um, you know, I'm sure they'll be in. They've got enough points. And, and Steve likes to run in the Derby. Oh, Bezos ran on for third. Uh, I thought he had a pretty sweet trip in this race, Marty. He basically only had to come around one tiring horse in upper stretch. But... That said, it was by far and away his best race so far. So he's improving at the right time. What did you think of his race? Shades of major fed. You know, he just, he kind of, I'm not going to say clunked up, but he did get past the horses who weren't 
doing as well as he was, obviously. So, um, yeah, Greg's getting the hang of this, and the horse uh, has some punch. And uh, like you said, I think he is going uh, the right way at this time. Now, Proxy, he was one of the two disappointments in the race. They added blinkers for the race, and he just didn't get the same move forward that I think his connections were hoping to get out of him. You know, Marty, when I first watched this race, I just really wasn't all that taken with Proxy's race. But on review, to me, it might be a better race than looks. And here's the context in which I say that. There was no point in the race where I thought this horse was really putting forth a full effort. And he still lost by, by less than three lengths. So, I mean, he just kind of ran around the racetrack, but he really wasn't beaten all that badly. What did you think of his race? Yeah, I mean, it was okay. Um, I, I would have thought, you know, again, it was a merry-go-round race, Jay, wherein, you know, the leaders were one, two the whole way around. It, it, it seems to happen as they lengthen out uh, in distance, uh, some of these races. So um, I'm sure that the Godolphin people will want to go ahead and run him. He's got enough points, too. He's run creditably enough uh, down in New Orleans. So uh, onward and upward for proxy. And then lastly, Mandaloon, who was the favorite in the race, a disappointing sixth. And by my way of looking at the race, Marty, absolutely no excuse. He got a nice trip stalking uh, outside the, the top two leaders right where he was in previous races when he ran well. And for whatever reason, he just did not go on with it. I, I don't know what to make of his race because as well as he ran in the Risen Star, this race was a huge step back. Yeah, I mean, was he not favored in all three of the races down there this year? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so he was, what, second in the LeCompte, and then he won the Risen Star, and then, man, he was bad. And you even kind of mildly scolded me because after uh, when we were conjuring up this uh, grid for the uh, for the latest Derby Watch, I lifted him up to 30 to 1. You said, no, 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 he was, the you know, he was 3 to 2 or whatever in this race. And, and the betters won't jump off of him that fast. Plus, it's Cox and, and Judd, Judd Montney has enough points to get in the race. So, he'll be in it. Uh, but he certainly can't bring that effort to the Kentucky Derby. No, certainly not. And he'll be one of the ones that we'll be wanting to watch in terms of how they train at Churchill Downs in the time leading up to the Kentucky Derby. Well, that's our recap of the goings-ons from the past week. Essential Quality, the new favorite on the Derby Watch Top 20, and Hot Rod Charlie moves way up after his victory in the Louisiana Derby. Stay tuned here at DRF.com. We'll have a preview of a big weekend that's coming up with three point scoring races. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.